Now, there is a lot to see in Carnforth, if you know where to look for it. But to be quite frank with you, many people just regard Carnforth as a very, very noisy traffic jam. But before that, the canal came up here after the stagecoaches, and it became a marina, so that they, they were able to bring the coal up to here, to this, where I'm actually standing now, into this very spot. And they would they bring the coal, and then they would get the limestone from here and from farther along and they would then take all this back down to the south of Lancashire and that would be uh, for the road building. But once the canal proved its worth, the railways came along and they were much faster and they could deliver much more tonnage. So Carnforth then became a mainline railway station. It's not now, it's a shadow of its former past. It has been a real stopping off point on the main London to Edinburgh and London to Glasgow route. Not only that, it provided engines, it was a main depot, and it was also where steam died. I was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time, and there's uh, just over there where I live, there is actually a railway, there's some railway sheds, and they opened them up, it's now in private ownership, but they opened up just for one weekend to celebrate the end of steam 40 years ago, and I just happened to be there when the engines were arriving. Now, for an ex round woman's son, that was absolutely fantastic, believe you me. This turned out to be the biggest outdoor event that the railway magazine had ever been involved with. On the Friday, before the public were let into what used to be Steamtown, calm but purposeful movements of a wide range of locomotive power were to be seen. Some came from far and wide. Others are based in Carnforth. It really was a race against time to get Scott's guardsmen and Oliver Cromwell ready and into position despite the technical hitches. There were engines and carriages to be cleaned, boilers checked and steam raised, and the whole site to be refurbished and made secure. Most of the major exhibits all seemed to be in the wrong place and so they had to be shunted around and grouped together just so that the visitors over the weekend would get the best possible view. Working diesels were all together at the north end of the sheds in and around the new five road diesel depot. And all steam locos were lined up at the south end of the XLMS steam shed. Can't think of a more appropriate place indeed. And in the shadow of the 1940s still surviving coal and ash plants. Plus, there were a large collection of withdrawn and redundant diesels, which the West Coast Railway used for spares. On Friday evening, the little resident diesel shunter was kept very, very busy indeed. Until finally, the doors were open to the public on Saturday and the crowds just flocked in. A merchandising area with several trade stands was set up in what was normally a carriage renovation shed. And business turned out to be very, very brisk indeed. It was obvious that a large number of enthusiasts had come not only to see the unique display of engines, but also to purchase new equipment, or simply to add to their memorabilia collection. The display of locomotive power brought people from all over the country to admire to wallow in nostalgia, but especially to photograph. Particularly Orton Hall, or as most people now know it, the Harry Potter Express, Hogwarts Castle. Uh, I've worked for West Coast Railways for uh, eight years at least, eight years, and in 2001, Warner Brothers uh, contacted David Smith to see if we could use this logo in the Harry Potter films. Being one of the drivers for West Coast, I was nominated to uh, drive it uh, while they were doing the filming. The first film we did in uh, King's Cross, in Platform Nine and Deep Waters, and that was two Sundays. Um, and after that, uh, we had to do some filming up at Glenfinnan in Scotland on the Fort William Mallet line. That was quite exciting because uh, most of the stars were there and we got to meet them. And luckily um, I got quite a few of their autographs. In fact I've got all of them now in the first group uh, that J.K. Rowling wrote. 
So since then we've done quite a bit of filming for one of us with the Harry Potter train. People come up and ask uh, if we actually get paid, but we don't get paid by Warner Brothers, we get paid by David Smith. Um, I've sent photographs of uh, Hogwarts Express and myself and the time on the footplate. We've gone to America, Australia, Japan, Hong Kong and all over England. Because people come up and ask, have we got photographs? And I just send them off to them. I think another reason why so many people have turned out for this event is that due to all this bureaucratic and petty nonsense which goes under the banner of health and safety, many regulations which seem to have been designed to keep the inspectors in their jobs rather than the companies, it's now very difficult to gain access to restoration sites. And here, access was being allowed to possibly the greatest railway event for decades. <laughs> Another highlight was the naming of the engines over the weekend, one by Pat Marshall and the other by George Hinchcliffe, ex-managing director of Steamtown. The weekend was proven to be a great success. That's providing you weren't in urgent need of a beef burger or a cup of tea. It was good to see that parts of this once proud locomotive depot and station still remain. The station has now been renovated and turned into a very successful railway heritage centre and features the film Brief Encounter, which had some scenes filmed here. The turntable of Rex Smith's day is still here, although his new shed is in a very sorry state indeed. The town of Carnforth sits cheek by jowl with the railway and it's good to see that the West Coast Railway Company and the station visitor centre are carrying on the proud railway heritage on which the town is founded. Now that Carnforth has become the starting point for many steam excursions, I just wonder, will this highly successful open day also become a regular event? <laughs>